In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to customize the Maya interface. Now, a bit of a disclaimer before we get into this. I uh, don't think it's necessary for you to do any of this stuff. I typically work with Maya at its default settings because I am a teacher. Um, so I want students to have sort of like that default experience. So I'm very accustomed to using Maya in all of its default settings and not changing anything. Uh, with that said, I do like to mess around with my shelves and my colors a little bit uh, to just kind of make things a little bit more interesting or a bit easier to look at on the eye. So I just want to point out quickly that this is not necessary for you to do. Uh, I'm just providing this as an option. If you uh, do ever find the need or want to, uh, to customize your Maya interface a little bit. Now, the first thing I want to mention is uh, this little workspace drop down menu right up here. Now, this will allow you to quickly switch between different layouts. And the real useful part about this little drop down menu is that you can always come back to a menu. So say you're in a classroom environment where multiple students are using the computers. Uh, someone may upload their own interface or their own layout or just change things, close some menus, so on. Uh, and you just want to get things back to the way that they are as their default. So you can always just come up here and reselect general. And then even if the general menu looks a bit different, you can just come down and say reset current workspace. Uh, and that will bring you back to the default layout of your workspace. Now, the other thing I want to mention here right next to this workspace is this little locking icon. This will allow you to lock the interface. Now, if it's unlocked, you will notice that, uh, say, for example, the attribute editor, I can tear off the attribute editor and move that around. If I want, I can dock it to this side over here. Um, and uh, sometimes that happens by accident, right? So sometimes you may close uh, that uh, menu by accident. So you'll pull off that menu and say, accidentally close it because you just want to get rid of it for the moment. But then you need it again and you're looking for it and you can't find your attribute editor. So to find any of your windows, you can go to, or any of your menus, you can go to the windows menu. And most of what you see in your default interface, you can find under general editors. So you see that there's our attribute editor. So I can just bring that back up. I can dock that to my right side over there and then I can lock my interface so I can't accidentally drag that off. Now many people prefer to work with this unlocked. That way they can drag and rearrange things at, you know, uh, at will. I kind of like to keep mine locked uh, until I need to unlock it. So it's just a useful thing to know that that's there. Now the other little useful thing within the attribute editor uh, is this little pin icon. Now this is a very cool feature um, that uh, I just kind of learned about recently, but I think it's very, very nice to have, very cool to use. Now what this will allow you to do is keep certain attributes in the attribute editor. So for example, say I'm working on a object. So I'll just bring in a, a little sphere here and I want to apply a material to this object. So I'll right click and go down to assign new material or we'll do new favorite material and just say standard surface. And you'll see that we get the standard surface material. Now you'll notice that uh, we have all the standard surface material attributes here, but if I click on my object, it kind of takes that away and it goes to just our sphere attributes here. So I want to be able to click on my object, but keep that standard surface material attribute uh, panel up there. So what I can do is pin that um, my attribute editor, basically. So now with that pinned and I select my object, the attribute editor will uh, stay what I had it on or what I want it on uh, until I uncheck that pin. And now when I click that, See, in the, at the moment, it's it's kind of sticking to what I want. But uh, just to kind of show you another example, say I have another object here, another sphere in my scene, and I select this sphere, right? So now that's 
going to that standard surface, but maybe I want to keep it on this standard surface, so I pin it, and now I'm staying on that standard surface, no matter what uh, object I have selected. So these are things that I may have mentioned before in other lectures, but they are definitely worth mentioning it again before I get into customizing your interface. Now one thing I like to play around a lot when I'm customizing my Maya interface, and this is something that just sort of naturally changes as I'm working and I'm playing around with different colors, um, and that is uh, changing the colors of my, my interface. Now one really uh, quick way to change your background color is the Alt and B key, or Command and, or Option B, I believe, if you're on a Mac. So that will just quickly cycle through different background colors. I kind of like this default dark gray, but that is one really quick way to just sort of cycle through and change your uh, background colors of your viewport. Now the other thing that I like to change color-wise is the colors of my wireframe and my selections. Now again, I want to point out that this is not necessary for you to do. You may notice that my colors may be a bit different in my lectures than the default colors, and that's just because I've gone in and sort of changed them and customized them a little bit. You're free to do so yourself, but you absolutely don't have to. It's There's nothing wrong with working with the default settings. So in order to change my color settings here, I'm going to go up to uh, Windows settings and preferences, and then color settings. So the first thing that I like to change is the color of my default unselected wireframe of my object. So I oftentimes will turn on this little function here, which is wireframe on shaded, and you'll notice that it's this dark blue color here. I like to change this to black, so in order to do that, we're going to go to inactive, and you can kind of find where these settings are just by looking for the specific color. So I can see that my polygon surface here is this uh, dark blue, same dark blue there. So I can just change that to black and you'll notice that now my wireframe is black. So that's the first thing that I like to change here. The other thing that I like to change is my live uh, my live color. So when you make an object live, which allows you to sort of draw on the surface or model on the surface of an object, it turns like this uh, greenish color that's a little bit hard to see. So let me show you. So if I select my object and I come up and make it live by clicking on this little magnet here, see that it turns this green color. Uh, I'm not really a fan of this green color, so we're going to change it to sort of like a a lighter gray color to sort of match the color of the object a little bit better. So uh, for that I'm going to go to uh, active. It's somewhere in here, it may be an inactive modeling. There it is. So it's under inactive modeling live. So uh, I like to make this sort of just like a, a lighter gray. So maybe something along the lines of this. You even make it white. I don't really want to make it white though. Just sort of like a, a more subdued gray. And then the other thing that I like to change is just my selection color. So if I come in here and um, let's make our object not live anymore. Uh, and I um, I do like to change that green. We're not going to do that for now, but uh, I do like to change that green color. Um, but say I want to come in here and just select an edge, and that changes to that sort of peach color that I find a little bit difficult to see too. Uh, and if we select a face, you'll see that that changes to a peach color there. Again, a little bit difficult to see. So um, that's going to be under active and components and we see we have polygon edges and polygon faces. So I'm gonna make that sort of like this dark red for both of those. So that's a little bit easier to see when we're making our selections. 
So uh, those are just some quick color changes that I like to make. So if you notice that my colors are a bit different than yours, uh, that's how I've changed them. Feel free to mess around, play with this. You can't really mess it up. Uh, if you do uh, end up with something that you don't really like, you can always just come to edit and reset to defaults and that will change everything to the default settings. So now we see that my default sort of wireframe on shaded is black. Uh, if I make my object live, it turns that sort of subdued gray color. Uh, if I uh, select a face, then we have something that's a little bit easier to see uh, than that sort of peach color that we had before. Now, the last thing I want to discuss here is how to make a custom shelf, how to work uh, uh, with, say, there's tools, functions that you're using quite a bit, and you want to add those to your own sort of little custom shelf. Now I have a shelf here called Mega Shelf that I have made and this is pretty much every tool that I ever use in one shelf. So it's just sort of like everything in one place. It's very useful. Um, I use this a lot. But I just want to kind of quickly show you how you can make your own shelf. So you do have a custom shelf here and you're more than welcome to add things to this custom shelf. Uh, basically, you can do so by uh, dragging and dropping. So say, for example, I want to take, um, say we'll go to, say something I hardly ever use. So let's say we'll go to the shape editor. Say I want to drag that into my custom shelf. I can just middle mouse click and drag that into my custom shelf. And there we go. Uh, it's now in my custom shelf. Now say I want to get that back to where it was, which was in the sculpting uh, menu. So I'm just going to drag that back into my sculpting menu and then drag that back into place there where it was before. So you can really easily just drag things around into a custom shelf. Now if you want to make your own shelf, you can come over here to this little cog and say new shelf. And we can name this whatever we want. So I'll name this something like Lens Shelf. Oh, it doesn't allow spaces. So let's do Glen. Let's just say Glen. This is my shelf, right? So uh, I can drag and drop different tools in here. I can also find tools in the menu. So say a tool that I use quite a bit is the multi-cut tool. So I can go to uh, Mesh Tools and I can come down to the Multi-Cut tool and I can hold down Control or Shift or Command and Shift if I'm on a Mac and then left click my mouse and that will add that to the shelf. So say another tool that I use quite a bit is Extrude and Bevel. So that's going to be under Edit Mesh. So I can go ahead and uh, add both of those, Control, Shift, click, control, shift, click, and those will get added to the shelf. Now say there's a, a, a like a setting that you want to open up and get the settings to, right? So for example, like the, um, if I go to mesh cleanup, right, the cleanup function, I hardly ever just use the cleanup function because I want to make sure that I have the settings right for it before I actually click on it. So I'm always going into the settings for that cleanup function before I click on cleanup, right? So say I just want a, a quick button that will open up the settings for cleanup instead of just performing the cleanup function, then I can do that just by, instead of clicking on the cleanup function here, I'll come over and click on the cleanup settings. And then that will add a little uh, button there that will open the cleanup settings rather than the cleanup function and then I can do both of those as well. So now I have one that will open up the cleanup function and one that will just perform the cleanup function for me. Now any of these you can also access their settings just by double clicking them. So you can see that I can double click that and, uh, and access their settings. 
And we can even customize this a bit further by going to uh, the shelf editor. So if I go down to this little cog again and go to shelf editor and say for the cleanup options there, say I want to add a, um, a different icon. So I don't really like the look of that icon. Mm -hmm. Say I want to make that match a little bit more of what these look, look like. So what I can do is just come over and select that, which at the, you know, currently doesn't have a name. So I can just rename this to uh, clean uh, options, something like that. And then I can uh, click this uh, icon name and I can browse for other icons. So we can click that little M function and then I can browse for some other icons that may that I may like a little bit better that will um, sort of fit the style of my menu a little bit better. So say something like that. So I want that cog to be my cleanup function. So sort of like cleanup options. So I can just select that and we see up here that that has now changed. I can also change the uh, icon label. So uh, CO actually works well for cleanup options. Um, so I can just say maybe do CO like that, or I can just remove the label altogether uh, and then it may look a little bit nicer. Uh, so now I just have the cog and I don't have any, any letters up there. So when I'm done with that, I can then go to save all shelves and that saves my shelf. Um, I like to make sure that I have everything saved, so I will generally also go to File, Save Preferences, uh, and that will also just save everything. Um, I can also rearrange this, uh, my shelf here, by going to the Shelf Editor, and uh, I can just sort of rearrange the shelves here. So say I want my Glen shelf to be up here in the front, uh, I can just drag that all the way So drag. Oh, no, here we go. So we have these options here. So I can just move that all the way to the front. We see that it moves all the way over there. And say I don't really want that or say that's an old shelf that I'm not going to use anymore. And maybe I just want to get rid of it. Right. So um, I can just select that shelf and hit this little trash can or this trash can, and that will get rid of that shelf for me. So we'll go to Save All Shelves, and uh, that is a quick rundown of how you can customize your interface, customize your shelves, um, change the colors a bit, um, rearrange your workspace if you need to, um, or reset your workspace back to its default settings.